Now that I've given you an overview of the big fraction case studies, let's turn our attention to the Project Reactor Async Task Barrier Framework. And I'll show you how this particular framework is used to guide the construction of the driver programs for all the various case studies we use for Project Reactor. As you'll see in the following lesson, there's also an implementation of this async task barrier that works with Rx Java as well. We're going to focus first on Project Reactor, however. So most of the test methods that are in the big fraction case studies run asynchronously using the subscribe on method. And we'll talk a lot more about that shortly. And therefore, because they run using subscribe on or some variant of subscribe on, these methods will actually return before their computations complete. In fact, that's kind of the very idea of doing asynchronous computations. You want to be able to have things running in the background, and then you'll give back a mono or you give back a flux. And when the computations are done, the mono or flux will emit the results. It's therefore very helpful to define a single location in our main driver program that can be used to wait for all the asynchronously executing test methods to complete. So we're going to be running lots of examples in our case study, and we're going to be starting all these methods running asynchronously, but we want to have just a single place to wait for them to finish, because otherwise it gets very complicated waiting for the test to complete, or conversely, they complete too quickly and you don't get the results that you expect. So here's an example of a main entry point into one of the test programs that we'll be looking at later. The async task barrier class provides an API that's used to register non-blocking methods that will run asynchronously in the background. So for example, you can see here that we're calling async task barrier register. And async task barrier register is taking in a method reference that will then run the test fraction reduction async method or the test fraction multiplication callable one or test fraction multiple multiplication callable two method references. And all of these method references or the methods that implement them will be running asynchronously in the background in a pool of threads. This framework also can be used to handle task methods that run synchronously, although that's not quite as interesting use case as the asynchronous cases, because we really need to have something like this for the asynchronous computations. All of the registered task methods will start running asynchronously or synchronously if we use it synchronously when the async task barrier run tasks method is called. And you can see here what happens is after we register all these asynchronous computations to run, we then say async task barrier dot run tasks. And that goes ahead and starts up all the computations to run in the background. The driver program, the main program in this case, then calls the block method on the mono that's returned from run tasks. And this block is the one and only place that we wait for all the asynchronous task processing to complete. So everything else is running in the background, unhindered, able to do things concurrently, able to do things asynchronously. But the main thread is going to be blocking, waiting for everything to finish. And the reason for doing that is if we don't block the main thread, then it'll fall off the end of main, the program will shut down, and we won't get the results that we're expecting once the tests do, in fact, complete. So essentially, async task barrier provides a framework that asynchronously or synchronously runs in the background, thereby ensuring the calling method doesn't exit until all the asynchronous processing is finished. So you can take a look at the async task barrier class for Project Reactor in pretty much any of the case study directories. And we'll walk through the implementation of this class in much greater detail later in the course. However, first, I want to cover the various methods, the key methods that are part of Project Reactor's mono and flux classes so that you can actually make sense out of the implementation of the async task barrier. I could show it now, but you'd probably be very confused because you wouldn't know what all the methods do. So right now, I'm just explaining how async task barrier is being used by all of our programs. And then later, we'll take a look at a deep dive into its implementation once you have a better understanding of Project Reactor itself.